This video is just instructions in how to understand and complete the gear ratio quiz. Here we go. To better help you understand the gear ratio quiz or quizzes that you see throughout this semester, I wish to use an example of a manual transmission. And by understanding how a manual transmission works, you can easily understand how a dual clutch transmission works. To start with, we need to understand that there's four shafts in a manual transmission. Okay? First of all, there's the clutch shaft or the input shaft. Either work, either name is correct. Some might even refer to it as a, as a clutch gear or an input gear, and we'll show you what that means throughout the, you know, the duration of this little demonstration. This is the main shaft, this whole thing with all these various synchronizer sleeves, speed gears. Uh, here's another sleeve with the uh, uh, reverse, uh, this incorporates reverse gear, and here's first gear. And actually, this is fifth. Clear, clear at the very end is fifth gear quite often in a five-speed manual. So the largest is first, second, third. We've already pointed out fifth. Now fourth is a different approach. Fourth is accomplished simply by locking the input shaft to the, to the main output shaft. Now these two are locked together. What I put in, or the number of revolutions I turn, is exactly what I get out here. It's a one-to-one, it's -one or direct drive. Okay, now we're back into neutral, basically. Nothing has been selected. The other two shafts that you need to understand or know what's inside a manual transmission are the others. Here's the reverse, I'm sorry. This is the cluster, or um, counter shaft. Here's another view of another counter shaft just to let you see how complex, in a sense, this is to manufacture. It's one solid piece of metal with all the gears cut to this shaft. This is an expensive shaft. Okay, so that's shaft number three, the cluster or the counter shaft. Again, it goes by those two names. The third one, even though it seems really, really simple, is this shiny shaft that the reverse idler slides back and forth on. So we got the reverse idler shaft, that's our fourth one we pointed out. Here's the counter, or again the cluster, because all these gears are clustered on the one shaft. We also pointed out that there's a input or clutch shaft and the main shaft from this point on, which houses all the speed gears in this case. Okay, let's point out one thing about reverse, because this is, reverse is actually kind of fun. So this is actually reverse gear, and again, it's associated with uh, <laughs> this synchronizer sleeve, that, which engages first gear and second gear, okay? But this reverse gear on the main shaft and this reverse gear on the counter shaft, these two never physically touch each other they are joined together by this reverse idler gear. Now this reverse idler gear does mesh with these two. Okay, it joins these two. And if you think about it, in order to obtain reverse, I've got to get something to turn, I've got to have one more gear in the process to actually reverse the direction of how things turn. For example, if I, and uh, let's just go ahead and select second gear, for example. And, and as we've learned uh, and other, other things, power comes in. This is the drive gear. This is the driven gear for this, these two gears relationship because here comes the power and it's delivering here. So this is the drive gear. This is the driven gear. Power comes over to the gear that's been selected Okay, on the main shaft, which in this case we've, we've selected second gear. This gear is a drive gear because it's going to deliver power 
to this gear, which now becomes a driven gear. So I know we use the term drive and driven back and forth, but it's all about the gear's role and how it delivers power, or is it receiving power? That's how you have to look at it. This gear is always receiving power from the engine, so it will always be a drive gear, and this gear will always be a driven gear, except in the case of fourth gear, because fourth gear, this cluster shaft gets totally bypassed and not even utilized. There's fourth gear, as we mentioned earlier, direct drive. Now I'm back to neutral. Well, in the case of reverse, this remains in neutral here, but there's another arm that will reach, that slides down and moves the reverse, hope I can show this appropriately, Remo it moves this reverse idler over in mesh, connecting these, this gear on the main shaft and the one I pointed out earlier on the cluster. And now when I turn the input shaft, of course the output turns opposite. Okay, kind of fun. Okay, I'll disengage. I'll go ahead and disengage reverse. I'll slide reverse idler out of there. And now I'm, whoops, it wants to fall back in there because of gravity. And we're now back into neutral. I can hold the output shaft, right? I'm in neutral, engine's running, okay? But once I uh, push the clutch in and say select first gear, power comes in. This is a drive gear because power's coming from the engine. Here's, this gear's being driven. Power comes over to first gear. Oh, sorry, back here. Yeah, clear back here. Because this gear's been selected, so this, this speed gear's been now locked to the main shaft. Well, this gear back here is a drive gear because, again, engine power is coming from this relationship, delivering power here, but this gear is delivering the engine power to this gear, which is the driven gear. So the formula that we use throughout this entire exercise, the formula is driven over drive. So I think this is easy to see. This is drive gear, this is the driven gear. And again, the formula is driven over drive. Over here in first gear, this is the drive gear because of its role, not because where it's located, because, but because this is delivering power, engine power, to another gear, and this becomes the driven gear and is the final output. There's first gear. Let's go to second gear again. Drive gear, driven gear. This gear here is, what do you think? It's a drive gear. Okay, this is gonna deliver engine power to this last gear which is being driven by that gear. And so now I have drive, okay, driven over drive. And the formula is going to also say, well, you have, to, you have to multiply the input and the gear ratio, okay, this gear ratio times this gear ratio is how I'm going to find my overall output. This is the drive gear that's driven, so I take the number of teeth on this gear, divide it by the number of teeth on the drive gear to get my second gear overall ratio. I would take this ratio times these two gears and their ratio, and I'd have my final output for second gear. Let's go to third gear one more time. Okay, now that I've selected, this is back to neutral, I've selected third gear. I'm locking this gear to the main shaft through this synchronizer assembly. Power comes in, this, this, these ratios never change, right? Drive gear, driven. This is a drive gear. This is being driven by that gear. Engine power is being delivered to this gear. So this drive, this is the driver, this is the driven. So power comes down over to third gear. This is being driven and again out. I will times this ratio of these teeth in that relationship and the teeth, how these two, the number of teeth on each of these two gears in that relationship, we times these two ratios by each other to come up with third gear output. And there's third gear. 
fourth gear, well, I hope you understand there's nothing to calculate, there's nothing to count, because all I'm really doing is locking this shaft to the main shaft. And there's, again, there, there's nothing to calculate, there's nothing to count, because let's see, it's a direct drive. Fifth gear, I guess we will do fifth gear. Power comes down the same as usual, okay? Drive, driven, but it comes through the back of the transmission. This becomes the drive gear, and this is the driven because it's the last gear to see power coming out. I haven't selected it yet, so I gotta shift this and lock this gear to the counter shaft because this gear is actually part of the main. It's solid with the main output, okay? They, could, they kind of reverse how things are done, but still, this is the uh, drive and this is the driven in your calculation and your formula. Driven teeth over drive teeth. Driven teeth over drive teeth. Once again, to help maybe save some confusion on the formula, driven over drive, whatever role the gear is in. Is it delivering power or is the gear receiving power? If it's receiving power, it's the driven gear. Thank you, I hope this helps. So now let's explain the worksheet. I've got a little box up here. That's why it's a little off-centered here. But anyway, again, the formula is driven over drive. That's how you calculate a gear ratio. So let's look at the first question here. What is this transmission's input gear ratio? Well, this is the input shaft. This is the input gear for the input shaft. This would be called the input gear for the cluster or counter shaft because these two are always in mesh, always, always. So driven over drive means I'm going to take, this is the drive gear, this is the driven gear. 30 divided by 20 teeth, 3 teeth divided by 20 teeth gives me 1.5, right? 1.5. That's that. That's the transmission's input ratio. Well, we'll just do that. First gear. So let's do the same thing. So the power comes down. Let's go back to first gear. And if this is the drive gear, this is the driven gear. It's going to be 34 divided by 15. Where's my calculator? Here we go. So 30. 4 divided by 15 gives me 2.66, 2.266, sorry. So let's punch that in. That'll be enough. Sixes. And the input ratio is 1.5. And so my overall ratio, let's times this by 1.5. Because this will be a constant throughout all these ratios. 1.5 will be my input ratio. It will be a constant throughout every, every ratio. Well, except the fourth gear. We'll explain fourth gear. The overall ratio for first gear is 3.4 to 1. 3.4 to 1 is what we're really saying. What does 3.4 to 1 really mean? Let me just highlight it there. This means the input shaft is going to, uh, for every 3.4 revolutions, let's go ahead and just draw the power flow, right? Actually, I'm going to use the other one. Uh-uh. Let's go back. Sorry. Input ratio. Go over to first gear. Up and out. That's the power flow. For every 3.4 revolutions, I get one revolution. This is how we get good torque starting off, you know, this heavy vehicle from a, from a stop, starting out from a stop, okay? Then as speed picks up, we're going to um, shift gears. Second gear, what's its ratio? Well, let's go to the second gear. Looks like second gear. Of course, we got drive and driven, but this becomes second gear. This is the drive gear. This is the driven gear because it's getting power from the bottom gear. Driven over drive tells us that 32, 30, 
2, okay, divided by, whoop, get that down, 22, right? Divided by 22 gives me 1.45. I will time that by my constant rate input ratio of 1.5 to give me second gears final output ratio uh oh i lost what it said 2.18 2.18 to 1 again this is going to rotate 2.18 times to the output shafts one revolution all right so now our speed is picking up see how that works I'll let you work with third gear. Let's go to fourth because it's it's a different animal. Fourth gear. Well, this is kind of a trick line. There's nothing to calculate. There's nothing to count. There's no teeth. There's no gears really because fourth gear, as you saw previously in this video, I locked the input shaft to this output or main shaft and the power goes straight through. Power goes straight through. It bypasses the counter shaft. We don't even use the shaft in fourth gear or what's also known as direct drive. Okay. Let's show you fifth gear. I know I did on the video earlier, but uh, for fifth gear, this will this will remain the same, this constant 1.5 to one, you know, 1.5 ratio. Uh, I'll give you a calculator. And fifth gear, well, uh, fifth gear's ratio, well comes down we go to fifth gear of course this is the drive gear and this is being driven so the fifth gear is going to be 20 teeth divided by 33 teeth 20 divided by 33 equals 0 0.606 whatever well again i got the input ratio still times that by 1.5 that's definitely an overdrive ratio. In other words, this only has to turn 0.9 revolution to turn this one full revolution. Many overdrives today are 0.8 something, 0.7 something. So this isn't really a very uh, 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 high ratio, whatever you, however, you, however you want to say that uh, overdrive example. Okay. All right. Let's let's uh, let's do one last one reverse because reverse can be confusing. And again, in the video I, we pointed out, here's reverse idler gear, and you don't even use reverse idler gear in your calculation. Even this handout, whoever made this, I, I'm grateful they they posted this. Not used in ratio calculations. We are only going to use the drive gear and the driven gear for reverse. This, this gear here could actually be about any different diameter size. All it does is transfer motion from one gear to the next. These two determine gear ratio. Okay, so let's do it. Uh, driven over drive, 40 teeth divided by 13. Let's clear this out. 40 divided by 13. Now, I've still got this input ratio because my power for reverse let's just do this for fun reverse comes over same old place now if that gear was slid over like it should be for reverse my power would simply come right up through all three gears before it goes out i couldn't draw a very straight line there sorry <laughs> so i'm going to exit my drawing we still we still have to times this by one Point five, my overall reverse. This has to turn 4.6 revolutions to turn this once. That's pretty torquey reverse. So, well, there you have it. Uh, an explanation of how to, how to calculate gear ratios and uh, the, the really fundamentals of, of how gears and ratios work. Good luck.